What's up, everybody? Who's ready for this week's top three? This week, we are doing Marked Decks. I'm pretty excited. I am super pumped about this one. I am a big fan of Marked Decks, and though we don't have regular opportunities to get our hands on Marked Decks, I always love seeing the effort and the just intelligence that goes into a beautiful marking system. Yeah, I'm, I'm so fascinated by just the intricacies in how they come up with the whole idea. You know, sometimes I look at a mock deck and I know the system and I'm still like, I don't understand. It, and I think that's <laughs> a sign of a great marking system. If you know a deck is yeah. marked and you can look at it and don't know where the marking is or what the marking is, and you still need to go watch the instruction, that means that when you're out there using it, it really is going to go right by any lay people or spectators who you are using this deck with. And that's one of the things I really love about a marked deck. It's hiding in plain sight. Yeah, for sure. Let's uh, hear what number three All is. All right, man. So this week's number three is the GT Speed Reader. The GT Speed Reader is printed by USPCC on classic stock. It is produced by Murphy's Magic and retails for $12.50. It is part of an unspecified print run. Let's uh, check it out. So as you can see, man, this is a pretty uh, laid back deck here. It looks like a mandolin back, and I think that's great. I think, you know, again, hiding in plain sight, you always want a deck that's really going to look normal. Yeah, and in this, I mean... Being a reader style mock deck, um, it still took me a second to just kind of understand how it's mocked, you know. But once, obviously, once I got it, it was pretty easy to to get. And I I don't think your spectator will really see it because it's so inconspicuous. But as you can see, kind of see a little bit of movement there. It is, it is pretty subtle though, which I think is great. And the one thing I really enjoy about a speed reader is that it's built to be easily identified from the point of view of the magician once you know where to look but most people who are going to see this as suspected are just going to see another you know probably mistaken rider back deck even though it's a mandolin back and they're going to right. and they're going to think it's a normal blue deck of bicycle cards i think that's what's yeah. one of the great things about this and why it takes this week's number three spot while it is an easy to use affordable and quick to read mark deck it's still relatively plain and so at the same time part of a great mark deck is being able to have the marking system on a custom back design where people don't even know that they're seeing a mark deck even though they're closely watching it because of the beauty of the design itself yeah i mean obviously something like a, a reader is is pretty it's about as open as you can get about literally writing the whole thing on the back where it can be in plain sight you know absolutely and so obviously you saw in the video as well this being a relatively standard deck of cards really the only uh out of the ordinary part of it is the reader aspect of it standard courts standard numbers and indices or indices and pips across this thing so nothing really to write home about nothing super exciting about it other than that you do get a 50 cents off and a dollar off coupon in there all right well there you there you go. Get excited, run out and get that GT Speed Reader and save yourself 50 cents on one deck, I'm assuming, and a dollar on another. So there you go. Yep. Oh, man. So, Steve, what are we coming in with at number two this week? We have the Esoteric by Eric Jones. Nice. Uh, this deck is uh, actually comes in two different variations. It comes in a gold and a static edition. Uh, the cool thing about this deck, actually, it's printed by Katamundi on their Slimline B9, which for a Magician's deck, uh, you know, we don't see very often. Uh, it is an unspecified print run and retails for $12. Nice. I love that marked decks are really in a very accessible price point as well. None of the decks we're looking at today go over that $12.50 mark, which makes them absolutely yeah. great to pick up as an EDC if you're really looking for something that you can bring with you and even use as a non-marked deck. It works out that way. Did you just say EDC? You're a baller, <laughs> man. For those of you who don't know, EDC stands for Everyday Carry. There you go. <laughs> so let's check out this esoteric deck. Nice. I really dig the the simplicity, but really uh, classic, um, sophisticated look of the, the tuck box. You know, being an Eric Jones deck, you know, he's very classy. He's stylish, uh, you know, and really cool. And it definitely comes off 
on the tuck box. It's got a very hard Art Deco vibe to it, which I really dig. And that back design, which is basically his logo, fits in perfectly with the theme of it, though. Yeah, and I really liked how they turned that into a marking system. You know, it's it's uh, it's very clever, and you know, like uh, you know, most decks, I definitely had to look it up. You know, there's very few marked decks that I look at that I'm like, oh, I get it. Yeah. You know, but uh, which is good, like you said. Uh, you know, if you look at it and you know, you know it's marked, but can't see it off the bat. I think that's a bonus. And one of the really cool things about this as well, and yeah, you can see a little bit of motion in that riffle, but one of the cool things about this is while it's custom on the back design and the jokers, it's relatively standard throughout. So it's still a good worker's deck, but it really has this like subtle classiness to it that isn't so eye-catching as to be distracting, which is I think is important as a worker's deck because you don't want to be distracting your spectator with you know very flashy foil flashy. yeah like foil yeah. things like that on a deck are always going to be too eye-catching and get you to focus too much on the card whereas this is a very subtle rework of standard courts standard indices and pips here but all works perfectly for that marked deck purpose or everyday carry for a magician yeah i, I do i love the recolor on those black pips and the red pips. Yeah. you know I, I mean sorry suits um, I think, you know, they did a really good job making those, um, you know, black suits kind of really uh, nice contrasting colors, just the black and the silver, you know. I try to flash that uh, explanation card really quick. Hey, Gal. Um, I don't think if anyone yeah. pauses, they're going to be able to catch it, so we're, we'll be good there. And being a Cardamundi deck, this thing handles like a dream. For anyone who's handled their B9 slimline stock, you know it feels great in hand. The biggest complaint about B9, obviously, is that it wears quickly. It sometimes feels a little too fragile, but ultimately, I find that it really has a great durability to it. And at that price point of $12, you can pick up a couple and not worry about it wearing out too quickly. Yeah, you can buy the gold version if you want. It's a little more classier, but it is uh, coming in at the same price. Which is awesome. It's really, and personal preference, whether you prefer the black or the gold. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's really cool to see Eric Jones, who I'm so used to seeing him do coin magic, uh, you know, come out with his own yeah, deck. Yeah, no. I thought it was Hopefully we'll see him do a little more uh, card magic with his own deck now. Yeah, that'd be dope. Okay. Let's... uh. Let's see what number one is. So number one is a little bit of a sneak peek as well, because this deck is not available until April 5th, next Monday. But I am really excited for this deck. This deck coming in at number one is the Gliders, Bicycle Gliders from Penguin Magic. The Bicycle Gliders is part of a 2500 deck print run printed by USPCC on their classic stock. And again, this one's coming in at $12, man, which is just a great price point, it seems like, for marked decks. Let's check it out. All right, man. So I have to say, I think the really cool thing about this back design is it gives such like a vintage vibe to it. And obviously being gliders, this whole theme of the deck is air, air, paper airplanes, which yeah. who didn't love paper airplanes growing up, you know? I mean, growing up, I love them now. Yeah, I, they frustrate me now because I can't <laughs> throw them any better than when I was eight. So, but the, the cool thing about this though is it has a very very clean back design to it and i was saying to steve earlier if you were looking at this and didn't know the theme was paper airplanes i don't know if i'd see paper airplane i just see a really cool pattern and that's what i really love about this is if it wasn't for the fact that it's marked it would be a, a usable deck no questions asked and you can see even riffling through the marking system is relatively difficult to even visualize so this is by Kevin Raylek, the, the marking system. Obviously, Kevin does a phenomenal job being one of the most prominent marked deck experts out there in this day and age. But being USPCC stock also handles like a dream. And being true to what Penguin Magic usually does is this is a fully custom deck. So we have custom jokers here, custom indices, pips, and courts with that paper airplane theme running through the entire deck. Yeah, uh, I have to say, I really like this deck. And uh, as you'll notice when you check out the court cards, it, it and this is, might be just me, but this kind of brings on the, you know, the Geppetto vibes for me. It's something that I would think, I, I think I would see in his shop or something. It, it's definitely like really cool that it's built out from this whole like folded paper feel. It definitely has that like workshop yeah. handmade feel to the courts, which I really enjoy. And then you can see that kind of like, paper fold feel in all of the pips as well yeah I, I mean normally i'm not a big fan of 
know, designs on every single pip. Uh, and it would probably, for me, look a little cooler with just being on one, but it doesn't destroy the card for me being on every Absolutely pip. agreed. It's very subtle. It's yeah. subtle. And I was thinking the same thing too. Like it would be, I think in, this is always my position on it. It's not so much that I don't like it on all the pips, but I feel like it makes it more special when it's only on one per card or actually sp like scattered throughout several cards, yeah. you know? Yeah, I really like the, the, they did a great job in you know, Kevin Rayleigh being freaking genius when it comes to mock Dude, deck. absolutely. And there you have the double backer and the blank face card. That's one of the cool things about this too, is the marking system itself is actually not explained in the deck, so they didn't lose an ad card there. You still have the two jokers, the blank face, and the double backer, so you gain all of the magic usability with this deck as well. The marking system is included as a standalone video that you get when you purchase it, which I think is great because then you really have the full functionality of the deck still at your hands. Yeah, I like the name Glider Back, and it does definitely, you know, kind of resemble a tally ho yeah right? yeah with that circular like part to it it's really weird too for me it actually reminds me of like a, a fancy compass rose you would see as like a, wo a wood inlay or something like it really has yeah. that very much like hand made feel to it which i think just hits perfect and i really like the name glider back as well it's kind of a little play a fun play on rider back yeah i, I dig it so again, that is dropping on the 5th of April for $12 on Penguin Magic. And Penguin is actually going to be doing a special for the first 72 hours where you can get that deck for $9. So it's going to be 25% off. Dude, that's a steal. I mean, honestly, that's a deck that you could pick up a handful of at $9 and use as an everyday workers. Yeah, you guys should glide on over to Penguin. Did there you that. go. Very nice. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for checking out this episode of Top 3. Tune in next week to find out what our top three decks are going to be. Later.